M2 MacBook Air is out now and it really feels like a cheaper, slimmer, smaller and lighter version of M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch. But is it really that good and maybe M1 Pro 14 inch is a much better deal? Let's find out. What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On channel. If you wanna see the comparison of M1 MacBook Air and M2 MacBook Air, last week I did this comparison on my channel, so I'll leave a link down below. As you might have guessed, the M2 processor is more powerful than M1, but it's still weaker than the M1 Pro. Let's have a look at the estimated numbers based on Apple's claims about 18% faster CPU and up to 35% faster GPU compared to M1. And also let's throw in M1 Pro bit chip with 8 cores CPU and 14 cores of graphics, which comes in the base 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro for $2000. As you can see, M2 has pretty good improvement over M1, but still noticeably less powerful than even binned version of M1 Pro chip. And don't forget that we are comparing the base $2000 MacBook Pro 14 and specced out MacBook Air M2 with 10 GPU cores and 16 gigs of RAM, which I highly recommend for any professional work because you run out of 8 gigabytes of RAM pretty quickly. So it'll cost you $1500 and still has only 256 gigs of SSD. But if we upgrade the SSD up to 512 gigs to get the same configuration as in base M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch, we'll get the price of $1700 for the M2 MacBook Air. So there is only $300 difference between those. The only potential advantage of M2 Air might be slightly faster single core performance for single core related tasks and newer encoders and decoders for HEVC and H.264 for up to 8K footage, which linearly scales to 4K being 4 times faster. So the rendering times on it might be faster, but we'll know about it for sure in about a month when the first users will get their models. Let's have a look at the differences and decide whether they worth extra $300 or not. And considering faster CPU and GPU performance, we can already say that the chip itself, I mean M1 Pro chip, may worth around $100 more, so the difference is now even less than $300. And don't forget that the M2 MacBook Air has no fan at all, and it may thermal throttle under heavy, extensive workloads. M1 Pro MacBook Pro, on the other hand, wouldn't have those issues, and I almost never hear the fans spinning on my M1 Pro computer. So let's start off with the screen. M2 MacBook Air now supports up to 1 billion colors, has P3 color cabin support, and got a boost of brightness up to 500 nits, and it's a liquid retina display with constant 60Hz refresh rate. But the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 4 14-inch has mini-LED technology with ProMotion up to 120Hz refresh rate, also brightness of 500 nits in SDR mode, but up to 3 times more in HDR mode, which is really great. Also, you'll get much deeper blacks with M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14-inch and slightly bigger screen compared to 13.2 inches on MacBook Air M2. So the screen is hands down better in all terms on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14-inch and it's definitely worth about $100 more, in my opinion. So the difference right now is about a hundred bucks. 
if we consider all of those benefits of M1 Pro. Now let's move on to the ports. There are two main bummers for me in M2 MacBook Air. First is that two USB-C ports are still Thunderbolt 3 with up to 40 gigabits per second and it only supports one external display, which may be very limiting for certain people. It does have MagSafe and even fast charging with a 67 watt adapter in configuration with 512 SSD, or you can buy it separately in cheaper models. It means you'll always have both USB-C ports available. And also both computers have high impedance headphone jacks. On the other hand, M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch has all the ports you'll need and also an ability to connect multiple monitors. So it has three full-speed Thunderbolt 4 ports, two on the left side and one on the right side, so you can charge your laptop from either side if you want to. HDMI 2.0, which I use very often for streaming, and also it has an SD card reader. So if you do need those ports on M2 MacBook Air, you'll have to buy a dongle for about at least $50. So the M1 Pro wins again, and I can estimate those advantages in terms of ports at least for $50. So now we're basically looking at the same $2000 price point in terms of value. And to be fair, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch starts to seem a much better buy. And by the way, the internal SSD speed on M2 Air is almost twice as slow compared to M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14. Let's move on to the speakers and mics. M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch will definitely win in this category thanks to proper woofers and overall more advanced speakers. By the way, the webcams are exactly the same with the same notch on top, so it's a draw here. The keyboard and trackpad are also exactly the same right now, so there is no winner in this category as well. The major advantage of M2 MacBook Air is portability and weight, 1.24 kilograms compared to 1.6 kilograms on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch, and also 1.13 centimeters wide compared to 1.55 centimeters on the M1 Pro. Is it a huge difference and is it much harder to travel with a 14-inch MacBook Pro? I doubt it, guys. But if you absolutely need the lightest computer with decent power and efficiency, M2 Air is a great option. The other benefits of M2 Air is its battery life being significantly longer compared to M1 Pro 14 inch. Up to 15 hours of web browsing on M2 MacBook Air versus up to 11 hours on M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch. And M2 Air has 4 efficiency cores and 4 high performance cores, thus drawing less power in simple tasks. Whereas M1 Pro base model 14 inch MacBook Pro has 6 high performance cores and only 2 efficiency cores. And the third potential benefit of M2 Air is an ability to get 24 gigs of RAM without upgrading straight to 32 gigs in M1 Pro model, which is pretty expensive to be honest. If your work requires a lot of RAM and you don't really care about GPU performance, you can get the perfect combination of those in M2 MacBook Air. I wouldn't talk about nearly the same design and colors, it's a matter of personal preference, guys. In terms of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, they both have quite old and disappointing Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. So, to conclude, I think that in 95% of cases, if you're choosing between M2 Air and base M1 Pro 14 inch with similar specs, similar RAM and similar storage, the SSD, I would recommend to add $300 and go for M1 Pro. You wouldn't regret, guys. Trust me. But if the budget is really tight, check out my full guide on purchasing the right MacBook Pro for your needs and my M1 vs M2 MacBook Air comparison. Links are below. So what do you think guys? Which one would you pick and why? If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I see in my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.